Thank you, Ada. Oh, hey. Oh, oh, hi. How are you all doing? <laughs> <laughs> we were just writing you guys, we and here you just drop on in. Thanks for showing up personally. And I hope you don't mind my suit. I just like to dress up my best for when I'm in the office working. So we'll give you a quick tour of our office. It shouldn't take very long because the office is very small. But we do have it decorated with things that remind us of the jungle, some baskets, bow and arrow, a piranha. There's even a hammock made from palm that the older generation of Mako people used to make and sleep in. We have a map of Venezuela. We ha Whoa, that's a little bit too real. Uh, just a minute here, let me actually deal with this little jungle critter before it does any damage further. Oh, oh, oh. I'm terrible at that. Uh, let me just use my hand. I'll grab it. There he is. Oh, he's actually just made of plastic. But he does add to the ambience of the jungle, don't you think? As some of you know, in 2014 we were able to present the Makos with the New Testament. And this has really been a huge blessing to them in their spiritual walk. Um, but now our team is focused on the translation of the Old Testament. And that's really a long haul. But little by little, we're plugging away at it. Our team is plugging away at the translation. And so far, we've been able to present them with this, which is the books of Genesis, Exodus, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, First and Second Samuel, Kings, Job, Psalm 1, Psalm 23, Proverbs, and Daniel. And this has also been a very big blessing for the Makos. But they know that the Old Testament is a lot of books, and they want it all. So our team continues working on that. Another thing that we've been doing for the Mako Church and for the Mako people is trying to develop a library of Bible lesson booklets that will serve as a good accompaniment to the translated scriptures. You can see here a set of booklets based on the book of Ephesians that the Makos already have, and we're currently working on a similar set of lessons on, based on the book of 1 Corinthians. We try to keep the booklets fairly small so that they're easy to travel with. Um, you can see that as a cover we have this hard plastic sheet and that's in order to just protect the book from the harsh jungle environment and make these books be able to last. When you open them up you see that we have pictures, we have a lot of white space on the page. The Makos are fairly new to this whole concept of reading and writing. In fact, just 20 years ago, they didn't even have an alphabet for their language. So all of this is fairly new, and we want to keep the process of, of these Bible lessons simple so that the content is easy for them to consume. We keep the font large as well, because a lot of the Mako people have poor eyesight, and they don't have access to uh, things like reading glasses the way we do. So this is another element where... Uh, Marie and I are helping the Mako people just have access to the same things that you and I do as it relates to the Word of God. Not just scripture translated into their language, but Bible lessons that help them think and consider um, how to apply the spiritual truths that they're reading from God's Word. So last time we were with you all, we had our book, Our Witch Doctors Are Too Weak, and something that I'm personally working on now is translating this book. We republished it now as Messenger in a Bottle, but um, I'm working on translating the whole book into Spanish. There's a lot of Spanish speakers here in Miami, as well as in Venezuela and Colombia, where we travel to go work, as well as in Canada. The last time we were in Toronto, we came across a lot of Spanish speakers. So this book um, really kind of highlights the whole tribal ministry and how that all works and how that all functions. And so we've had a lot of requests from people asking us to pre please provide this book in Spanish. So that's what I'm currently working on now, is the translation of the book. So, Marie and I hope this gives you an idea of what our ministry is looking like during this time of pandemic. In fact, this is 
what our ministry looks like uh, all the time, pretty much, even when there is no pandemic, except possibly for this suit. Um, just a few months ago, in uh, February of this year, we were able to make a trip to Colombia, and uh, and our ministry is between Colombia and here in Miami, because in Colombia we're able to actually personally engage with the Mako people. There's a little jungle outpost there near the border of Venezuela, and the Makos are able to arrive there by boat in their dugout canoes, and Marie and I fly in there by airplane, and we're able to spend a week or two weeks together with them. And in Colombia, there's also another ministry opportunity that has opened up for us, which is at a, a Bible institute where Latin Americans are training to be cross-cultural missionaries. And Marie and I have been able to plug into that ministry when we're down there as well, teaching some courses, training the new generation of cross-cultural missionaries. So we thank you very much for your participation in all of this. We had hoped to be up in Canada, actually, right now. But due to the closure of the U.S.-Canada border to non-essential uh, traffic, we decided to postpone our trip to Canada until next year. So, Lord willing, in April or May, sometime in the spring or summer of next year, 2021, we'll be able to see you guys in person.